The Alabama Farmers Federation and the Alabama Farmers Cooperative proudly present Simply Southern with your hosts, Jim Allen and Mary John. Hello and thanks for joining us for Simply Southern. I'm Mary John. And I'm Jim Allen. For over 15 years now, the Montevallo FFA has been educating elementary school students and others in the community about farming through a fun outdoor event. We don't have to make farmers out of everybody, but if everybody sees it in a positive light, then we'll be in good shape in the future. They don't call them the outstanding young farm families for nothing. Today, we'll visit with the first of three finalists for the top prize for young farmers in Alabama. Sydney Phelps of Bonnie Plants is on the road today to see how the Scotts Company creates the soils and mulches that help your garden be more productive. But coming up after the break, to some it's a pesky weed, to others a feared poisonous plant. We'll show you why one Alabama city hosts a festival honoring the pokeweed. What sustains us? Food, family, faith. Alabama farmers live those things every day. They conserve our resources, clothe our families, and fill our tables. They cultivate jobs for our communities and values for our future. Farmers grow it all right here in Alabama. There's no such thing as downtime when you own a farm. This is your land. You tend it and try to get the most from it, no matter the weather or time of day. It's been that way for generations. And for generations, your local quality co-op store has been there for you. With a full range of agriculture supplies and services, from feed to fertilizer, seed to grain storage, and the right hardware for any application, you'll always find what you need. Plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. If some of y'all never been down south too much, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. Down south, we have a plant that grows out in the woods, and everybody calls it poke salad. For you youngsters out there, those are the lines from Tony Joe White's 1968 hit song, Poke Salad Annie. Annie, like many poor southerners, would pick a mess of this common weed to cook for her dinner, despite its poisonous nature. If this curious piece of Southern tradition sounds like it deserves an annual street party, the city of Arab, Alabama is way ahead of you. There's nothing like a street festival to show off a of downtown, and Alabama show sure has a mess of them. There's a strawberry festival, peach festival, shrimp festival, and a pile of art and music festivals. But only one little town I know of throws a shindig over a poisonous weed. It began 35 years ago in, at El Rancho at the Liars Club. Bunch of guys, they were all around and they were telling who could tell the biggest story so they became the Liars Club. And they started this 35 years ago and it's still going. The weekend event has plenty of family fun for everyone. The tents dotting Arabs downtown are filled with all kinds of handmade arts and novelties, artisans demonstrating their crafts, fun activities for the kids, dogs parading in costumes. It's no wonder folks come from all over to join in. They come from all the surrounding communities, uh, Gunnersville, Albertville, Boaz, Huntsville. The whole downtown area is being renovated. We've got new retail outlets, a lot of unique stores. So. Just the festival, bringing these people downtown and getting them acquainted with the new shops we have downtown is really, it's an economic boost for the community. And for those not familiar with the festival's namesake, there's plenty of opportunities to try yourself a mess of poke salad. El Rancho is going to be serving poke salad. We have a, a barbecue guy that is going to be serving poke salad as well. So I think we have two or three vendors that's actually going to serve it. <laughs> I like the texture, and it tastes tastes it's pretty good. good. It's tasty, yeah. Isn't it? yeah. Even though it tastes a bit like standard varieties of cooked greens, there's a little bit more that goes into making a toxic plant edible. Boil it three or four times and pour the water off, you know, and then that's pretty much what you do. Then you add your ingredients like I put bacon and eggs, 
and a little salt in it, you know, and sometimes I put onions in it. So why eat a potentially dangerous plant, you ask? According to master herbalist Daryl Patton, the tradition started back in times when you just had to eat what you could afford or gather. A lot of the people here were sharecroppers, and they would farm somebody else's land, and they were one step above slavery. And for them, poke salad was like going out in your garden and picking collard greens. It was something that they took for granted that it was there, and if you knew what it was, you could have your belly full. And not only was the plant a food source, its toxic nature could actually be a benefit in some cases. After having a whole winter of fat back and dried foods, and everybody felt that they were clogged. And so one of the benefits of poke salad is that it works on the liver. And the liver then works on all those other organs and it acts as a laxative too, and so it flushes the system. It is a toxic plant. This, you know, how many people have you ever heard of that died from poke salad? Probably zero. I bet you could go on the, the Googles, as they say, and find probably 40, 50,000 people who die every year from Tylenol or aspirin. And we don't think twice about taking those so for a poisonous plant, the pokeweed holds a pretty interesting place in Southern cultural history, and Arab Alabama would agree. Folks, when the festival rolls around next spring, take you a road trip and try yourself a mess of poke. You just might find a new favorite dish, or maybe not. Uh, it took me 20 years to get used to eating turnip greens and uh, probably another five years after that to get used to eating collard greens, and I don't think I've got enough time left to get used to eating poke salad. The festival looks like a lot of fun, Jim, but I have to agree with Nathan, and I know I have to turn over my Southern card on this, but when it comes to any kind of cooked greens, they might as well all be poisonous as far as I'm concerned. Oh, come on, Mary. You're really missing out on this one. I know. <laughs> but folks, a word of caution. Pokeweed is a pretty common sight down here, but it can make you pretty sick if you don't cook it right and never ever eat it raw. Go online to downtownarab.com for details about the festival. And you can also visit the southernherbalist.com for some pretty fascinating facts about herbs and plants like pokeweed. Coming up next on Simply Southern, we'll see how one school's FFA is educating the community on different farm animals they may not see every day. Soybean is a very versatile product. We make crayons out of it. A lot of the combines you see rolling through the fields have a lot of plastic side panels that are made from a soy product. The soybeans that we grow on our farm mostly goes into chicken feed. Soybean production in Alabama employs over 10,000 people. We grow some of the best soybeans in the world. We go the extra mile to make sure when our name is stamped on it, we know it's the best product we can produce. They take you where you want to go, where you need to go, and sometimes where you thought you'd never go. If we're lucky, the road of life is smooth and the curves are just part of the adventure. All for a better life. Enjoy your road. Alpha Insurance. All for a better life. Pay your bill, file a claim, and more with the Alpha to Go app. A farmer has to live on faith. We do all we can do, but we can only control so much. Alabama is the second largest poultry growing state in the nation, so we're trying our best to grow all the corn we can for that. What we produce not only feeds and clothes all of the United States, but about half of what we make goes onto the world market. We've been able to improve yields, have some things that, that can help us produce a better crop. I'm proud of the product we make and proud that I can say I'm an Alabama farmer. 